Hello, I'm Jill at Ingvit, and today's lesson is looking at the parts of speech. Okay, so uh, grammar uh, and these grammatical terms. So this is um, if um, if you're a beginner learning English, or you may be a native speaker. Uh, you just want to refresh your memory about what the parts of speech are, or if you were at school at a time when grammar wasn't taught very much uh, and you're a bit unsure about what nouns and verbs and adjectives are, uh, this should be quite a useful uh, overview, uh, review for you of, um, of the different terms and what they are uh, with some examples to illustrate. Okay, so let's have a look. So starting with nouns, uh, which are usually things or people, or they could be abstract ideas as well. Um, but um, so things like table, chair, cat, dog, and people, people's names, John, Mary, with the capital first letter, okay. Um, you can have abstract nouns as well, uh, such as uh, thought and uh, love, happiness. Uh, those are sort of intangible, um, abs as they're called, abstract nouns. Um, proper nouns are the ones which are names. And then just ordinary nouns, common nouns, are the ones which are things, objects or animals. Okay, so those are things and people, sometimes concepts, abstract concepts as well. Okay, right, so next one is a verb, which is an, either an action, mostly actions, but it can also be just a state of being in a particular state. Uh, so, and the verb, the infinitive of the verb begins with to, so to be to have, etc. So to be is a verb of state because it just means you exist something or something exists. It is to be. So that's a state rather than an action. But most verbs are actions. Okay. So to be, to have, to do, to work, to sing. So anything to do with something that you do, an action, really. Okay. Um, then an adjective describes a noun. So back to the nouns. Large, so large table, small, small chair. So it goes in front of the noun. Unlike in a lot of other languages other than English, the adjective comes after the noun quite often, uh, but in English, the adjective comes before the noun, okay? So large, small, red, any colours are adjectives. Clean, clean or dirty are adjectives. Nice, horrible, they're, they're all adjectives describing something. So a small cat, a red dog, uh, a nice chair, a clean table. Okay, so these are obviously all these parts of speech work together with other parts of speech in a certain order. All right, so next one is an adverb. You see the word verb is in it, adverb, um, which describes how an action is done. So the action is the verb and the adverb describes how the action is done. So you either do something quickly or slowly or happily or sadly, or you do it well or badly. So often adverbs end ly, but not always. So words like well are also adverbs, but usually you can recognize an adverb from L-Y at the end, okay. 
Right, so thinking of a sentence, the structure of it, a conjunction is a word that joins different parts of the sentence. So an obvious one is and, and another is but. But you can also have other sort of joining words like which and when and so on. Okay, right. And then the next one is the article. So usually it's either the or a or an. So the is called the definite article. And a or an is the indefinite article because the is a specific one that you're pointing to. And a is just maybe one of many possible ones. Okay, uh, more general. So those are called articles. Uh, so that comes in front of usually a noun. It could come in front of a noun. Um, it could come first and then an adjective and then a noun. You know, the red dog you could have or just the chair. So sometimes you put the adjective in between the article and the noun. Okay. Uh, you can also have words like some which come before the noun, some dogs, many chairs. So it sort of defines, um, you know, how many sometimes, some and many, as well as the uh, an. Okay, then a pronoun. So we've got the word noun here and pro in front of it. So a pronoun replaces a noun. It saves you having to give the noun. So I, rather than my name, I, 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 it's I and you, rather than John, um, you, and he, she, it, we, they. Those are the, called personal pronouns, all to do with people or, or things. Again, it can refer to a chair, the chair, it, it is broken. And people say, what, what is broken? But the chair that I just mentioned, it is broken. So you have to mention the noun first in the previous sentence, perhaps. Oh, look at the chair. It is broken. So it refers back to something you've already mentioned. And it saves you having to say, look at the chair. The chair is broken. It saves having to repeat the same word again. Okay. And then finally, prepositions, which are all to do with a location or a direction. It could be some movement towards something, or it could be to do with being in a location and your relationship to that location. So at, I am at the supermarket. Uh, I'm going to the supermarket. So that's more movement, direction. Um, on, I'm sitting on the chair. Uh, I'm going up the stairs or down the stairs. I'm in the house. So that's all to do with the relationship to where you are or where you're going from one place to another. Okay. So I hope that's been a useful uh, run through, revision of of these parts of speech. So if you remember uh, eight, most people say eight parts of speech. Um, so you can always think, okay, try to test yourself in your head. Can I think of all eight of these words? Okay. So um, if you'd like to test yourself on the parts of speech, uh, there's a quiz on the website, ingvid.com, if you'd like to go there and uh, uh, see how you do. And uh, I hope that's been a helpful session. So thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon. Okay, bye for now.